guys, welcome back to our channel. Thank you for joining us again. I know that these aren't as consistent as I wish they would be, um, but I appreciate everybody that takes the time to watch, takes the time to uh, comment. That honestly is pretty much the reason why I'm filming today because I've been waking up to, you know, people leaving comments saying, you know, they appreciate what we post. Um, as far as like the, the lighting assistant one, how to be a great assistant, that's one of, that has been one of our favorite videos that, you know, you guys have watched. So thank you for watching. And on that note, today I want to go into something that is, you know, that could very possibly help you make a choice as far as what uh, equipment to buy. Um, I know that, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I know that when I'm buying something, I try to outweigh, okay, how much does this cost versus what is the difference between getting this and getting something that may be, you know, twice as expensive or whatever the case may be. So today I want to go into detail, not too much. Here's the thing with me, guys. With this channel, I'm not going to go into detail and give you the micro like, well, this is 2.1 seconds versus 2.2 seconds. That's not my style. My style is if you're on the field and you're going to be shooting with these two pieces of equipment, what is going to be the one that's going to help you get through your job the easiest? So through our experience these are the things that we've learned basically um not so much the micro adjustments that i mean personally you're not going to notice when you're in a high stress situation you're not going to be thinking about those little things you're going to just be thinking about the bigger picture if that makes sense i hope it does so today i want to compare what my take is um would i recommend you to buy the ad 200 which is right here or would I recommend spending a little bit more and get, or actually quite a significant more, and get the AD400 Pro? So this is the one that um, we use every once in a while. This is the one that we use almost every shoot. So um, that should give you pretty much what the verdict is going to be. But let me go into some reasons as to why I think that this is good to have, but not necessary. And this is definitely one that I couldn't live without, this little guy right here. Well, first off, starting with price, uh, the 8200, if you don't get all the extra goodies, which I don't personally think you need, um, you're looking at around 269, 270 right now on Amazon. That comes with the charger and the unit itself. It, um, the one that's a little bit more expensive, it comes with the little, um, with the other head, the one that spreads light all over the place. I'll tell you, I've bought, I think, five 8200s and I've never used that thing. So I wouldn't buy it. I would buy the one that's just a regular, um, regular head, just like the, the flash head over here. The reason for that, let me put this thing down, actually. The reason I say that, and I'm going to take it off this head so that way you guys can see it. The reason I say that this is probably a better option is because one of the reasons we went back to the AD200 from the AD600 that I used to have is, is right here, the MagMod attachments. And, you know, I don't use every single MagMod piece of equipment under the sun. Uh, I use what works for me. So... This one is one thing that's undoubtedly changed the way that we shot. And just because you know that you can attach uh, grids, you can attach, attach gels, you can attach, you know, the snoot, which I actually used recently. I don't use it very much, but I use it on this last shot that, I'll, that you guys are seeing right now um, just to illuminate the little Hoonigan sign in the back. So very cool uh, little piece of equipment. I also used a mag gel on that one. Anyway, with the AD200, you have the freedom or you have the capability of using the um, mag grip, which is this little guy. And by using that, you can attach the gel, grids, whatever. You can stack as much as you want, basically. And you can control the light a lot more. You can put a, a spotlight where you want it and not have it spill all over the place. So that's great about this head um, because it's the right size. It's the size of a speed light. Let me throw this over there. Another great thing, one of our, uh, one of our photographers, uh, Serge, uh, brought to our attention is that you can also purchase a little LED light that attaches to this. And let me actually go get that. All right, so I went and grabbed it. So with this little um, attachment that you can take off, you can also put on... There we go. So it attaches exactly the same way that the other head attaches the flash head. But what it does now is when you turn it on, you can use it just as a regular LED light. And yes, that has a modeling, modeling light that you can use, but it's not exactly the same. This is definitely a lot better. And you can also, as I'll show you, you can also control the power by spinning this little wheel. Hold on. I'm getting a lot of glare. Sorry, guys. Right there. Two, one, two, three. So you can control how much power you get out of the 
the LED light. And obviously off also. So anyway, it's another plus for the 8200 on that. That's another win, I would say. If you've never used these things, the only downside is that they're made really, really terrible as far as the design of what can break. Meaning, you see this little LCD screen? We've broken a bunch of those. Why? Because every, every time you would have it on a light stand and it would fall over, it would be game over. So I did buy uh, this little um, sleeve. Uh, and I'll post it everything that I'm talking about I'll post below so that way you guys if you like it you can go and purchase it I don't make anything off of it that's just the, you know so your stuff doesn't break so um, I'll post this down there there are some other sleeves that that are a little bit thinner however they don't protect the back so right here there's about an inch maybe a half an inch of protection so if it falls back it will protect it and it has fallen since I bought these things and they're still kicking knock on wood so I uh, highly recommend these. The only thing you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to, if you have the 8200, not the 8200 Pro, which if it's my money, I would buy the 200, I wouldn't buy the Pro. That's just my take. You're not, in my opinion, you're not gonna notice the difference, so there's no reason to spend a little bit more. Uh, the only thing is you're gonna have to cut right here um, just to make this more accessible, the, the on and off button, because uh, otherwise it, it is kind of tight to get your finger in there. So for, I would say 99% of the photos that you guys see, these little guys are our go-to. Um, so here's my consumer report, basically. If you have the budget for that one, which is 640, or you have the option of buying two of these, which is about the same price. Uh, this is two, whatever I said earlier, 249, 259, something like that. So if, if I have the option of buying two of these or one of those, would I opt for something that has a lot more power and a faster recycling time? Or would I opt for something that has a little bit less power, but it's more portable? Honestly, I would go with, I would purchase, if I had that budget, two of these. Why? Because 99% of the time when you're using off-camera lighting, this is going to be enough. Uh, if you're shooting an engagement session, if you're shooting a family session, anything that you can control and schedule in the afternoon, this is going to be enough. You're not going to need more power than this. However, in the off chance that you do need a lot more power, if you end up buying two of them you know, for the price of one over there, this, you can always double up. And now you're getting pretty much the same power as the 400 because 200, 200 obviously because math you're going to be getting the same amount of power but you have the option of having that second light later in the evening if you want to do a front and a back light if you spend all your money on that now you just have a sh i was about to curse now you have a ton of power in the front without having any power you know or any light in the back to separate your subject from the background for that reason i think that this is a way better option to buy two of these instead of one of those now just to not sound like I'm just hyping up the 8200, the 8400 is a great unit. There's a reason why I purchased it. It's not, it's not something that I would say don't buy. I would say it's something that if you have a little extra cash and you want something that's a lot more powerful for those rare occasions, like if we're going to the sand dunes and we know it's going to be really, really bright before it gets you know to that nice level, that's nice just to have one big unit because we know we're going to need that much power. Also, if we're going to be doing high-speed sync, we know we're going to be doing those high-speed sync shots in the middle of the desert where it's really bright. I'm taking that one because the recycling time is a lot quicker. But how often are you in the sand dunes at sunset shooting a session? It's not something that we do all the time. So I have it for those rare moments. Um, or if we're doing family photos after the church, but we have to do them outside and we are actually using light, uh, which is rare. Honestly, most of the time we just look for shade and, and keep it nice and simple. Um, but if we have to use light, that's better because it will give us a faster recycling time. But I feel like for the old, you know, 80, 20 rule for 80% of the time, this is going to be perfect. 20% of the time, the 8600 is going to be, and I keep looking that way because that's where I placed it. The 8600 is going to be good. Pro tip, if you're going to use an 8400, and if I've been calling it the 600, it's because I had the 600 before, so I apologize about that. If you're going to use the 8400, I would recommend setting it on a monopod. Don't set it on a light stand and set yourself up for this thing falling over. Um, to me, it's worth it having an assistant to help you light this from the correct angle, first of all. Second of all, um, you know, sometimes you have a, a shot in your mind and there's no way that you're going to be able to do that by yourself. That's why I tell my assistants all the time, like, you're not here just to 
grab equipment. You're, without you, we can't get those shots that we need. Um, but I'm going on a tangent again. What I would say though is get a monopod, get a nice strong monopod and then just have somebody hold this thing because the last thing that you want is this thing toppling over and now you're out, you know, five, six hundred dollars, whatever it's, it's going for at this, at this point when you're watching. On top of that, it is a, a very heavy unit um, just to do, you know, carry it yourself and carrying all your equipment. It is kind of a pain. Uh, another thing I would mention is if you're going to uh, purchase another reflector, go ahead and get um, grids to go with it because this thing does spread pretty wide. Without the grids, it goes really, really wide. Uh, with the grids, it does kill quite a bit of light. Actually, this one especially, this is a 10 degree uh, grid. I'm going to go and put the other one on because this was killing like four stops of light. Last tip, I hope, uh, <laughs> this thing, this little LCD screen. Now, I'm old, I'm 35, so I remember when I used to leave like, like a CD player or a Walkman out in the sun and you come back and that thing is cooked, like the screen, the little LCD screen would get damaged. I'm not exactly sure if that would happen to this one, but I'm just gonna assume that it does. So one thing that we tell our assistants is don't leave it with the sun baking it because I, that can't be good for it. But one thing we tell them is place it this way down, however, in the shade. Uh, so I, I know right now it sounded like, wait, why are you telling them to put it face up? The reason I, tell, I say put it face up is because if you put it on the floor and there's a little rock right there, that's the end of that little LCD screen. So put it facing up, but make sure that the direct, direct sun isn't hitting it. If anything, throw the cover of our, um, of our equipment bag over it or something like that, just to protect that. That's just a quick tip that I wanted to mention so you guys don't go through any hardship with these massive behemoth things. Last thing, you can also use it to work out. Uh, obviously, I'm joking about that, but you can. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, but guys, I think that pretty much covers it. Um, the final takeaway is AD200, to, for me anyway, and a lot of people that I've spoken to, is definitely a much smarter route um, than going with that one. That's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions, if I miss something, um, leave me a comment below. I'm always happy to answer. You guys know. Uh, and if you have any direct questions, shoot me a message on Instagram. You guys, I think some of you have actually reached out and we've talked and I know some of you want to come and, you know, shoot with us and assist with us. Shit, come, <laughs> come and assist with us. Uh, you know, everybody starts out assisting. Hit us up and hopefully 2021 is a lot more busy because 2020 has been a lot of, uh, let's just say the grill has gotten a lot of action this year. And not by choice because I, I don't want to be grilling. I want to be shooting. Anyway, I'll see you guys on the next video.